Hi, I'm Rajiv Satyal. I'm a comedian and a host. I am Indian. And I'm American. So this show will tell the story of Indians in America. I live right here in Los Angeles, the home of Warner Brothers, Disney, and now Funny Indian Productions. My guest picks a game and we play it. So enjoy. What do you bring to the table? Welcome everybody to this episode of What Do You Bring to the Table? I'm your host, Rajiv Sethyal, and I'm sitting here with the lovely, amazing, talented, first Indian ever winner of Miss America, Nina Davaluri. Thank you so much for having me. Was that a good intro? Yeah, it was great. I feel like despite my voice today, I feel like that was still a pretty good intro. It was so. perfect. Good, all right. Is that what you refer to yourself as? Like, what do you, what do you call yourself? Like, what, are you actress, host, model? Yes. All those things, one of those things. So I definitely would say speaker and advocate, first and okay. foremost. Uh, through my platform, as Miss America mm -hmm. um, has been celebrating diversity through cultural competency, which I'm sure we're, we'll talk a whole lot about Oh, absolutely. Today. That's what the whole show is about. Um, yeah. I know we've we've overlapped even at like speaking some of the same events yeah. and some of the same things. Oh, we also have to play the game. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can go first. Yay. And hopefully it's, yes, it's close. That's good. When was the last time you played the contest? I actually think yeah. you might have been with one of my little cousins. I'm one of 17 and I'm the youngest, so all of my cousins have kids now and they're all- Wow. Yeah, so we have, um, I think between the ages of two years old as the youngest to 15 years old and wow. everything in between. So it's always, holidays are always fun. That's quite a range. So where in India does your uh, family hail? My mom's side of the family is from Vijaywada, um, which okay. I would say four hours from Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad is from a very small town um, outside of Guntur, is okay. the closest City. Where, yeah, what, what, what city is that close to? Um, is that also close to Hyderabad? It's, it's close to, it's closer to Vijaywada, about okay. maybe 30, 45 minutes. Wow. Um, so, so that's where they're from. My grandmother actually still lives in Vijaywada. And okay. And so uh, some of my mom's family, so we go back probably once a year. Oh, you go back to India once a year? Yeah, that's pretty frequent. Yeah, yeah. And you must love it. I do. Yeah. It's always nice to see family. So. That's really cool. Yeah. And so, um, how did being Indian affect you? Like, good, bad? However, how would you like to say it? I know after Miss America, there were a lot of kind of things going yeah. on, a lot of turbulence, and things like that. But talk just generally about your Yeah, experience. well, I think growing up, it was probably in third grade, I realized I was different. And I also grew up in Oklahoma, the, a very small, predominantly white, mm -hmm. conservative town. Sure. Um, and everyone always, when I said I was Indian, everyone would then say, well, what tribe are you in? Right, and right. And they would right. assume I was Native American. <clears throat> And so I remember also also feeling confused about my own identity and culture mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure where I fit in the category. Um, and so that was kind of really when I noticed I was different culturally and mm -hmm. ethnically. And um, I, when I was 10, my family moved to Michigan, very similar experiences. I was one of the only Indian girls in my classes growing up. Sure. And I think middle school is like the worst time for everyone. Oh, it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the most awkward possible, There's like the most good, awkward version of yourself. Right. There's no mm. good story. I mean, there is in hindsight maybe, but right. um, so middle school, it was, you know, you're still kind of trying to fit in while being true to yourself and all sure. of this, that, that struggle. And um, I think what was really difficult is that my parents really didn't understand what I was going through in the sense of, you know, we're second generation. And so that constant stereotype of, are you going to have an arranged marriage? Do you worship cows? What does the red dot mean? And your house smells like curry. So I think addressing those stereotypes was something I constantly found myself doing. And I would say, well, no, that's actually not it. And yes, yeah. it gets exhausting and repetitive over and over again. And yes, our house smells like her. Right, yeah, exactly. And that is true. That's, <laughs> that's not a bad fact. thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And so that was kind of really the start of my platform was just mm -hmm. realizing that we have to be our own advocates and mm -hmm. we can't expect everyone to be 100% versed on any culture, not only Indian, but around the sure. world. And uh, we have to be willing to teach as well. Now, what happened in third grade for you to realize you were different? Uh, so when I was in third grade, there was a young boy who came up to me and he said, Nina, do you believe in Jesus? And I said, well, I'm, you know, I believe in God and I'm a Hindu. And he said, well, if, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. That's a pretty good impression, by the way. I know, you, should, you oh, need to put acronyms on your, I yeah, I was going to say, well. you, that kicked in pretty well. I closed my eyes, I thought I'm sitting across from, uh, well, you know, my, wife, my wife's from Texas, so yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, one of my hidden talents. Yes, um, well done. And so I remember I went home that night and I told my mom what had happened and I was in tears over this and she had said, you know, Nina, sometimes it's best not to talk about our religion because not everyone might understand it. Sure. And I can see, you know, why maybe, what, 17 years ago she would say something like that. Sure. But the reality is, you know, we we're just talking about this earlier, that even in today's society, there are people still having those conversations with their children. It's very real happening today. And, you know, I think when I look back on my, kind of my experiences, I would think, oh, you know, that was this many years ago. Right. Um, you know, I would assume that we've evolved in, a, in terms of a country and a nation and people. Um, and sadly, that's... We've devolved, if anything. Yeah. Do you think things in the world are getting better or worse? I think more people are speaking up because of okay. the climate that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've seen definitely a lot of activism from mm -hmm. young people. And I think I was really surprised. You know, I've done a wonderful college tour. I've been able to speak with um, quite a few different colleges and universities, which is one of my favorite parts. And I remember right after the election, um, this past year, I was speaking at a university, um, kind of in the Midwest, I would say. I don't, we would obviously say where. Okay, all right. Um, and I remember I was. It was probably around March, right after inauguration, and I remember being extremely prepared because I just, you know, wanted to be able to address every topic that could have, you know, happened. This was after the Women's March. Right. Um, the travel ban, like there were so many things happening in that period. Yeah. And I remember being ready for all these questions and conversations and not a single person did it even really go in that direction. It was more, my talk was diversity, cultural competency, and it was more, what was your favorite memory of Miss America? Which is fine, you know, I'm happy to, right, right. I'm happy to answer those questions, but I think I was also surprised in terms of how much apathy young people might still continue to have, especially when I, I guess maybe living in New York, you see so much activism around right. you constantly. Um, but how that trickles in our nation, I think is a question we should be asking because those are the people we need to target. I miss America too. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that, that just occurred to me, I guess. Well, I don't know, maybe it's also the way that, you know, beautiful people, of which you are clearly one, are portrayed. I mean, obviously you're beautiful inside as well, I've gotten to know you, but external beauty a lot of time, maybe they've, they've been fed so much Kardashians and so much like whatever. It's, it's always funny to me where actors or actresses or hosts or speakers even will speak up about politics and people are like, oh, we don't want to hear about their politics. It's like, you want to know what they eat, right. what they wear, whom they're dating, exactly. and they like make one statement about politics, and they're like, oh, well, we don't want to hear about that. So right. then maybe condition to just ask you about makeup, yeah, which you're, is like, you know so much more than that. You're exactly right, and I think mm -hmm. that's kind of the struggle even in continuing forward when you have a title like Miss America, which is, I'm not going to sit here and deny that beauty isn't an aspect or component sure. of it, but it's also kind of hard to find your voice in, in a different space outside of that realm too. So mm -hmm. it's a constant struggle of push and pull, I think. Yeah, no, I, I would completely agree with that. And I applaud you on all the work that you're doing. Oh yes, yeah. and thank you. It's always the most awkward thing like when the guest hasn't played the next move and I'm like, how do I politely say go? I'm not really sure how to do that sometimes. Let's have some pop culture questions. What are uh, some funny movies that you've seen? Let's get to know you a little, the person behind the persona. What makes you laugh? Like, when, when you need a good laugh. Okay, so my favorite, my favorite series is Veep. Like, oh yeah, I, so good. It's so good. And she's the best sitcom actor in history. So really, good. like, either she or Lucille Ball, but I mean, she's oh, crushing it. I mean, insane, like, unbelievably, I mean, from Seinfeld to yeah. Hugh Christine, you know, uh, I miss, I miss the days of just good sitcom TV, like, well, I'm also obsessed with Fuller House right now, but I was, I love, like, okay. Growing Pains, you yeah. know, like, all of yeah. those shows are so good, like, the feel-good comedies, I feel, <clears throat> um, I think it's coming back, it's, it's only yeah. coming back. Yeah, so. I think so, I think we're in the golden age of TV, is yeah. what a lot of people say, you know. 
Uh, that's really cool. You know, it's funny that you, you mentioned TV because I hosted this event in Michigan, actually, and it was, I had to lead icebreakers for about 200 youth, and it was not two to 15, but it was something like 15 to 35, and I asked them to name funny movies, and they all asked if they could name TV shows. It's like this latest generation doesn't really watch movies as much. It's, it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of a, it's kind Especially of Especially when you can binge watch a show. It's, I, you know, we finished Stranger Things too. I mean, it's so good. It's so good. It is so, so enjoyable uh, on every level. And that's a great throwback to the 80s. Too. Yeah. I'm older than you, so, you know, for me, the 80s were uh, when I grew up. What are a few words to describe you? Introverted. Which I really? Yeah. A lot yeah. of people are surprised. Um, well, I have an older sister, and we're 18 months apart. She's my best friend. Oh, wow. Um, and she's also a doctor. So if you like ask my parents, they'll usually say, Oh, have you met my other daughter? She's a doctor. That's like the old um, joke. Yeah. There's an old, like, I think it's sort of right. like a Jewish joke, but you know, some of the first Jewish president. And then the mom says, you know, to the person next to her, hey, you know, his brother's a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so, I think we were talking so about good. that. She was older, so she always talked, and I didn't really need to when we were younger, so. Um, I'm the eldest of three, and I know what that's like. Because <laughs> so, yeah. I always say to I will say to my two younger brothers, I'm like, you know, I made mom and dad parents. You guys just show up. Yeah, you guys are just there. Yeah, you're just there. <laughs> so has it been a challenge to, like, do like the speaking advocacy and everything as an introvert, or is it more just kind of where you get your energy? Right, it's definitely um, a place where I get my energy. And mm -hmm. I think I remember my first interview that I did, my dad was like, you can talk? Like we didn't even know Nina could speak. Right, 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 that's so awesome. Um, so it was one of those places where it was something I knew I was gifted mm -hmm. with, um, and it came naturally, but it was kind of um, a secret yeah. uh, until I was ready to a talent. here I am. Yeah, just like your accents yeah. that you can do. Yeah. What other hidden talents do you have, or like things that if I say, hey, what are you really good at playing a game besides Connect Four? You're like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean you up on this. Um, Super Mario, Nintendo. Like, wow. I have beaten Bowser too many times to count. Amazing. I know, like, a lot of, <clears throat> I, I would like to say every single one, but I know a lot of secret passages. Um, okay. Which I think are most of them. But Within Super Mario. Within Super Mario. Okay. I thought you meant maybe in the city or something. No. All the speakeasies oh. and rooftop bars and yeah, I don't Harry know what you think. Harry Potter, style. exactly. Like, no, wow, we're gonna show us like a subway tunnel we don't know. No, I don't know that much. Like Mario Kart or like Mario Brothers? No, like Super okay. Mario Brothers. Okay. I um I remember we were playing Super Mario Brothers and towards the end of the first one, sort of ruin it if you haven't played it. The ending is you have to uh, defeat Bowser by like throwing yeah, stuff, yeah, you know, at one. him. Uh -huh. And I remember there there was this little girl at the party, and I'm like fighting Bowser, and she just goes, she was so cute. She goes, "How many more times do you have to feed him?" Aww. And she was like, "I know it's so quick, it's so cute." You're just like, she didn't think it was like a violent right. game. She's like, "You're feeding him." It's like, food. it's a really sweet way of putting it. And I was like, "Oh, that's really cool." Do you, you want to tell us any kind of interesting run-ins with celebrities? Um, I mean, my, my interaction with President Obama kind of takes the cake. Oh my gosh. Any <laughs> Jeez, yeah, that's kind of a mic drop. Yeah. You're just like, all right, you know what? It's really hard to top that. Yeah. And I remember I was actually at the White House uh, with Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. And uh, they do this amazing event called Celebration where they bring one child from every state and their families. And they're called Champion Children. Children oh, wow. who have survived. Um, sicknesses, terminal cancer, who are still going through treatments. Wow. Um, and we spend a week in Disney World. And, uh -huh. I know, right? That's awesome. Now the real reason comes out why you did it. And then we do a week uh, tour in DC after that. So we're with these families for two weeks and you become very close with them. Um, but so we end the tour with a visit to the White House and they typically do it every year. And so uh, President <clears> Obama <throat> came out and a nice little Q&A with all the um, kids and uh, then he was, you know, staged to take a picture, and right. his spot was right next to me. So he said, "Oh, Miss America, you know, we're so proud of you. You know, congratulations." And I said, "Thanks." You know, and I thought that was my moment with the president, and had you know kind of moved on. And then uh, his chief of staff actually pulled me aside and said, "Miss America, would you like to meet the president?" Oh my <laughs> right gosh! Oh my god! You're like, I don't know. I'm a little busy yeah, right now. I don't know. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm good. So then I realized I'd be led to the Oval Office and oh my gosh. Um, I'd see President Obama waiting. And um, he said, Oh, yes, Nina, please come join me. And in my mind, I'm like, Okay, Barack, like, sure. Followed by his first name, that would have <laughs> right. been so great. Like, oh, I'll hang out. Um, so, of course, like, that was just the incredible moment. We talked about 
my platform, what I was doing, um, had a nice little probably seven minute meeting. Uh, I, I knew I was going to ask the number of minutes. I'm yeah. really into numbers, so yeah. Right, exactly. That's a long time. It was, it was a good amount of time. Just one-on-one? One-on-one. Um, Amazing. And, I mean, there were some of the staff. Well, no, but I mean in the like yeah, conversation. Right, yeah, mm. um, which was really great. I don't think, I don't think you can ever get the president completely alone. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, that's awesome. Do you use your education? I mean, where did you uh, go to school? Oh. You already mentioned it, but what did you major in? Um, yeah, so my degree was brain behavior and cognitive science, and um, wow. I actually started competing for um, Miss America, so it's the only um, program, I would say, that is a scholarship program as well. Um, okay. So it doesn't cost anything to enter, wow. um, really purely uh, scholarship-based, so you can walk away with money. Um, and through my time competing, I earned a little over $90,000. Well, wow. uh, I was okay. able to graduate, to, and I think that's when my parents were like, oh, this is kind of legit. <laughs> but that being said, I was able to graduate debt-free, mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any student loans, and I How still have um, about 50000 left to put towards a graduate degree, should I choose to pursue that. That's awesome. Um, I think it was interesting because the day I won, at that moment in time, I was actually applying to medical school, like full-on, had taken the MCAT, had started my application process, and you know, this was kind of Miss New York and Miss America were mm -hmm. plan B, I suppose. You know, right, it wasn't right. really planning. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so <laughs> awesome if you're like, I'm going to win Miss America. That's the exactly. only thing I have. Yeah. That's it. Right. No plan um, B. And so that was what I was doing. And it, the, the, the day I won, I, well, actually, like the week I won, I basically withdrew all my applications. Um, and I think the secretly, I feel like I had competed when people ask, you know, why did you compete? And um, yes, scholarship was certainly a part of it, and of course the platform aspect, but I think I also really knew that I just didn't want to be a doctor. And yeah. to actually verbalize that and say it to my parents, who had invested so much in my education, and right. I had too at this point. Of like, course. You know, that's what I went to the college for, and I thought that that's what I was supposed to do. And um, so Miss America was a dream of mine, and when it actually happened, it was, okay, I think I can do something else. And yeah. I really genuinely can wake up and say, this is what I was meant to do. It's amazing that it takes that level of an accomplishment, like we are just talking about, yeah. for your parents to be like, all right, okay. you got to be a doctor. <laughs> I think for me, when I when I opened for uh, Prime Minister Modi, yeah. because I did that in, um, and you, you did that out here. Yeah. Well, we both did that. Yeah. It's so crazy, I forgot about that. Because you, you did it before I did, so you went. <laughs> you did it at MSG, and I did it in California. And they flew out, and I think to see their son, speak in front of 17,000 people, right. you know, and, and get, you know, do well, get written up in the LA, LA yeah. Times and stuff How like was, that. I, I want to share mine, but I want to know yeah, yours of course. too, like, no, did your, when your parents were there afterwards, like, what, what, did you see, did you have a moment with them? Yeah, I mean, I think they knew that it was happening. I called them, yeah. or no, I was there um, at home, and I knew I had it, yeah. and then I, I was talking about my career and whatever else. Mm -hmm. They heard that Modi was coming, and yeah. like, oh, you could see, see if you could do anything, and I already knew I had it. Mm -hmm. And then I said, it would be pretty cool to do that. And I like yeah. really hammed it up, you know? <laughs> I don't know. And then at the end, I was like, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm opening the show, I'm not seeing it. Oh, yeah. And uh, they went, what? And they just like, really? And they said, oh, we gotta come out and see it. Um, I remember seeing them there while I was on stage. And then even afterward, just like the hug and the moment, and because, once you book it, it's great. Right. Then you're like, did it go well? Yeah, now luckily it did. Now you gotta do it. Now you gotta do it. I know exactly. Because uh, I asked a friend of mine that once on uh, the podcast. She's like, what was the best moment for you when you booked something? He goes, getting getting the call. Yeah. Because like as soon as you hang up, it's like, oh, I gotta write the set. I gotta perform it. I hope it does well. Hope people watch it. So there was that moment, and yeah, I got to meet him very briefly. But uh, yeah, it was definitely one of those crap achievements. Yeah. What about yours? I think that was very similar. I, you know, I remember telling them that I was doing it, and they were just kind of like, "That's great, congrats," you yeah. know, and they were happy. But I don't think they realized the magnitude of it. And right. I remember even when I had, you know, told them when I met President Obama, they were like, "Oh, that's so great." And yeah. I just remember this felt so different because they came to the event, um, and then afterwards, um, there was. Um, a dinner, I think, at the with in conjunction with the State Department and Indian Embassy that we had went to right after the show or speech, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, they were able to come to that yeah. dinner, and then he did it like a very again quick, brief meet right. and greet. And I remember my dad was there, and 
I think just the look on my dad's face because yeah. I think it's one thing to meet you know the American president, but essentially you know our parents are from from India. Yeah, I mean they're born. That's right. Yeah. Like that's the motherland, and for them to be able to you know meet, I think the prime minister, one who's creating you know such you know waves of change, I suppose. Right. Um, I think just on his face, especially, he was like, I was able to do this because of you. You know, I was able to meet oh, the prime cool. minister. So that was that was just a really special moment where I feel like they connected even more so because yeah. of you know being Indian. And also like the scale of Modi, it's like four times the size of, it, of right. the United States in terms of the number of people. Yes. Largest election ever on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. He won it, so it is a different magnitude, yeah. uh, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. So, no, but I think the joke I always did was that I went to the Silicon Valley to open for Modi because I was an engineer <laughs> in school and I didn't oh. take a job as like a wafer fab engineer. And so I go, now my parents are proud that I worked <laughs> one day in the Silicon Valley, and that, that's that really counts. what it was. That counts. Yeah, that, counts. that counts. Have you made it? Oh God, I don't think so. Okay. Um, and I think in, in reference to kind of, you know, just what we were talking about is that I think there's, I think everyone experiences successes in their lives. Sure. Um, but what you do with that is kind of more defining than the actual moment, if, if that makes sense. It's, and I think also we live in a culture, it's like, well, what's next? Hard right. development, what are you doing? <clears throat> totally. Like, totally. And just trying to keep up in that space. Yeah. And um, and, there, and now it's so easy to create content and all right. this great stuff, but also finding something that's meaningful. You know, people are hungry for, for good, meaningful things to be put out there, especially now. Oh, I completely agree. And But that's what's so cool, that's what's so dope about being the first Indian Miss America. No one can take that away from you. Like, that's a lifelong thing. What, what drives you? Is it somebody's approval? Is it, uh, and is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? Like what positive and or negative motivators do you think you have? When I lay my head down at my pillow at night, I want to make sure that I've represented myself to the best and truest ability. Hmm. And I'm not saying that that's easy to do. Of course, <laughs> of course. Um, and so kind of, I think what's driving me currently is, is continuously asking myself that question. Mm -hmm. Is this really what Nina is representative of? And also kind of also, as much as I appreciate Miss America, I think there's a stereotype that is still kind of followed with mm -hmm. that title. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, that's not all of Nina. Right, <laughs> right, to be. of course. Um, and yes, it's a part and a piece and it will always be there, but also shifting that voice as well. Well, I mean, comedians go through that too, but like expect yeah. me to be funny all the time, right? And I had uh, lunch with somebody the other day and I think at the end of it, he was kind of like, and I was aware of like our conversation got so serious, yeah. and he's very successful and all that. But comedians are philosophers. Like if you if you you know we, we hung out once, we like had a drink yeah. or a couple of drinks for a couple <laughs> we hours. Had a few. Yeah. We had a few <laughs> drinks, and they were just like you know after a while like I'm very I, I'm very aware of like is it getting light, is it heavy, whatever. But I like to get down to it. I like to solve the world's problems. Yeah. I like to talk about things. And for me, it's like being funny and friendly and cheerful and all that. That's that's great. But I also want to like. Find out who you are. Right. You can't just be joking around the whole time. So there's I just, a like, time and place. Yeah. There's a time and place for it. 100. percent How much would you say? Okay. So there's going to be a PC answer to this question, which is inner beauty. I'm sure people are going to say inner beauty. Um, but how much of society do you really think is inner versus outer beauty? I mean, you're a beauty queen. What is there really, really on that? Like we look at. There was a comedian who did a bit about like, oh, all these singers, what's amazing is they're all so good looking. Like, what is the probability? Like, how do those go hand in hand? We know that looks have a lot to do with it. How much do you think that affects males, females, other, in between anywhere on the gender spectrum? Does it still affect women more? And what do you think the percentage oh, is? such a loaded question. It is, I know. I know where you're going to go right. but some of it. But yeah. like, yeah, come on, give, give me the okay. real answer. I, I, I will. So this year I was actually a judge for Miss America. Okay, and, I know. Um, it was, I was incredibly excited to be on oh. the other side of the table just sure. because you know exactly what you put in to be right. even on that of stage. Of course. Um, and I remember, so as a former, they are, were sitting with the other judges and they kind of had to ask you, you know, what was your job? Like, good, bad, ugly, and what, do you, what are you really looking for mm -hmm. for the next Miss America? And I said, you know, honestly, I think unfortunately what people don't see is that there's a 15-minute private interview that the judges have with every contestant. And they can ask you oh, anything, wow. like very similar to you and me, but like yeah. a panel of seven judges, any question is fair game, wow. from political, your platform, life, like 
anything. Wow. And so that's really where Miss America's won. Like your job is to be a speaker and advocate. It's not to pose for a pretty picture. Yes, like that's part of it, but not all of it. Okay. And so I will always say, you know, the biggest thing I learned is that Miss America and having a certain look will certainly get me into certain rooms. Um, I can get my foot in the door and I will have a leg up on other people who might not. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I have to prove that I belong in that room. So yes, there is an outward level of beauty that might get you to a certain place, but if you can't speak, if you can't do the job that they want you to do, mm -hmm. or whatever it is you're looking for, whether that be in, a, in hosting, entertainment, you know, physician, doctor, whatever it is, right. if you can't do that job, then ultimately you're not qualified. That is um, really awesome. So I think, yes, you know, I think it's, it is a loaded question because you can also be aware to use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've all seen kind of both sides of, of course. where it might pan out and where it doesn't. I've often heard, that's, that's such a great, I've, I've heard that the first door is easier to open, but the second door is harder. Yeah. Because like when you get Absolutely. in that room, a lot of people kind of want to take you down. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's just here, he's just here. They're just a face. They're just good looking. Right. And then you have to work that much harder Absolutely. to be like um, more than just a pretty face. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Lucky, luckily for me, I'm not that pretty. <laughs> you know, I get in the room. Well, also being funny, that's an advantage because then people don't want to mess with you, right? They're like, well, if I say something to this guy, you know, then who knows what's going to happen. No matter how successful you become, and clearly you are in shape, you take care of yourself. Is there, I remember when Fergie was like, I still go to Taco Bell. Is there any like low end food that you're like, dude, I don't care how successful yeah. I get, I'm always gonna eat that. Oh, absolutely. <coughs> I, mean, I Taco Bell really, truly yeah. is like number one on my list. Um, they open these cantinas now where you can get alcohol in there. At Taco Bell? Yeah, what? that's dangerous, <laughs> yeah. They open one in Cincinnati, I think they have one in LA. I'm sure oh they have one Oh my goodness. Here. Yeah, I'm that's crazy. Not, I've yet to check that out. I know. Maybe the next time we do drinks, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go to Taco Bell and drink. I don't know what you could get yeah. there. Margarita, maybe. I'm not sure. That'd be pretty. Baja Blast. Baja Blast. Um, that would be pretty legit. That'd be pretty great. Um, yeah, Taco Bell, but I guess maybe Burger Place, Burger King. Like I love. Burger really? King. Absolutely. The beauty queen loves Burger King. That is amazing. It's so classy. The beauty queen loves Burger um, King. Yeah, yeah, so those are two my two favorites. Which, what's your go-to dish? Um, I always get the veggie whopper. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, I didn't think you were a, a, um, a, brie, a beef girl. Yeah. No. Are you a vegetarian? I am. Okay, okay. okay. Which, uh, which animals have you ridden? Oh, I rode, I rode a camel when I went to Egypt. Oh, wow. Which was like the best trip of my entire life. It was a cousin's trip and we all went. It was 2008, so before the revolution. I mean, it was just, Egypt is such a beautiful Oh, the country. Egypt revolution. Like, I was thinking about this revolution. <laughs> <laughs> We've had so many. Um, I know, oh wait, the Obama revolution yeah. is where I was going with that, which is a good one, I think. But right, because, yeah, the fall, was that spring of 2011? 2011, yeah. Arab Spring, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. So it must have been amazing. It was incredible. Um, so just, I mean, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it so much that when I went back to school, um, I ended up taking an Egyptology class. So you know a lot about Egypt. I know a lot about Egypt. Wait, what was the question? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's the only like. I, I asked you, uh, what animals have you ridden? Oh, so yeah, a camel. Oh, camel. That's, okay. um, and then a horse. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure a pony at some point. So I was going to say, I was going to say, maybe a pony. Yeah. Uh, okay, that, that's really good. I rode an elephant in India. That was pretty good. Oh, great. yeah, I remember that. That was pretty awesome. I mean, you you're in the water. Did you ride No, so, I'm not really, this is going to sound bad, but it's going to get good. Okay. I'm not like this huge, like, animal cruelty advocate. Okay. Well, not of animal cruelty, but against it. Um, but at the same time, I was like, the whole horse and elephant thing for weddings does feel cruel, cruel to me. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Bharat is like, the, the, the one thing they say about Indian weddings with the Bharat is like where the man comes in on the horse is relevant. Right. And it's the one part that's really about you. Because everything else is about, about the, the it's about the bride pretty much. Yeah, that's true. So I was like, you know what though? Uh, all my life I've gotten so much attention. I want to do a car. And it was like a, a 57 like Lincoln Continental, and it was my brothers and I. We came in together. Oh, that's so I want to share that, share that moment. Yeah, with yeah. So we didn't, we didn't. I didn't ride a horse, <laughs> much to some people's dismay, but I loved it. I thought it was just a great yeah, moment. It's different. Rolling in with my boys, like had some music uh, blast, yeah. and you're like, we 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 threw in like a lot of Indian music, of course. Yeah. But I was like, for just a minute, I need to hear like some Snoop Dogg, and we did. I was like, I was like, I was like, come on, man. So my barrage is gonna like be. That video is cool. It is pretty legit. It is an Indian wedding, so it's literally yeah. gold, I guess. But yes, it, it, that was uh, pretty amazing. 
When did you know you were good at what you do? So like speaking, advocacy? Definitely in high school. Um, okay. I was always viewed as a leader, even though I didn't necessarily perceive myself that way. Um, and then I kind of started noticing that. I was like, okay, like yeah. I, I can kind of lead and people view me in that role. And so it was definitely high school. I was always involved in like student government activities mm -hmm. and then that transition to college too. I was yeah. always in some sort of executive board position. Yeah. And I remember, and I'm really grateful for this friend, especially in um, college. And whenever you have a male say that to you, we were, it was with the Indian organization I was a part of at Michigan. And um, so we had this transition meeting and he said, you know, I really hope you continue staying on board. Um, it was like, because I don't know if you realize this, but when you speak, people listen. And that's a very wow. rare quality to have. And this was one of my dear friends and you know, and he was also male. So for him to say that, I mean, not that I needed a male validation, but it's just yeah, why does that you're, you're, it's it's also another perception of okay, not just I'm not just empowering females, oh, my right. voice isn't just affecting them. Sure. Um, there are male counterparts who are taking me very seriously in this sure. role. And that is um, that was some sort of validation I think um, that was helpful moving forward. Yeah. What's your karaoke song? Are you a singer? Oh yeah. Okay, so I actually love. I love to sing. I, okay. I don't sing as well as I dance. Um, yeah, because <laughs> you're a pretty, pretty darn good dancer. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. yeah, for sure. Um, it's always, it always is either um, probably Britney Spears and you give me one more time. Or, it's so good. It's so good. Or um, I guess I was at karaoke like three weeks ago, and my song then was Taylor Swift, Bad Blood. So, that is a good one. That's a good too. I sing everything. <laughs> I'm that worst singer though. I don't There's care. There's actually I, I a place do it anyway. in the city that has Broadway <clears throat> karaoke, like full no way. on Bollywood karaoke. Yes, and dude, I've you've totally, done it. I've totally been there twice, and they actually bring out a separate book for all the Bollywood music that they have, and it's that like all amazing. old school. It's it's mostly old school, like classic Bollywood, but it's like yeah. stuff that you're gonna just get so into that everyone knows. That is so boss. So that's oh been my like gosh. my new karaoke jam. Yeah, that is uh, that is some knowledge that I'm sure people, well, uh, Bollywood knowledge, Bollywood knowledge, yeah. GK to BK, Bollywood book. That was really amazing. We need to finish the game, so we're gonna do like a we'll do a speed round okay. until one of us loses really quickly. Right. So uh, I think it's your turn, and we'll just wrap this up real quick. Um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Anything else, guys? Guys that you can think of? I don't know. We'll just do some stills on the way out. Uh, I don't know, I'm just going fast now. <laughs> Not really strategizing at this point. Uh, yeah, something like that, maybe. Ah, you won! Yay! I was going here and you won. You won, you won. Very nice. All right, dude. Great job. Uh, thank you very much. I'm actually going gonna to pour some out for the homies. I want to thank everybody for joining us today on uh, this episode of What Do You Bring to the Table with our lovely, amazing host, Nina Davalori. I've been your host, Rajiv, and I still am. Wow. And I apologize for my voice. My gosh. Next week on What Do You Bring to the Table. So I'm in this group called Freestyle Love Supreme. Okay. And we're a freestyle rap improv group. When they told me, when they were like, we get it, yeah, we get it, we get it. You're the ladies and gentlemen, Caucasian and melanin. I'm coming from Maryland, I'm Indian, revving my engine, getting attention. And they were like, stop saying the same They were like, for God's sakes, like you're a comic book nerd, you're a basketball junkie, you love hip hop. Please start talking about the Incredible Hulk the same way you talk about yourself. So then I had to be like, I had to flip the grammar and talk about gamma yeah. rays and Bruce Banner and like how, you know. Luckily and, you work with Shockwave, so you got those gamma rays. Yeah, yeah, yeah.